author of 20 novels, 17 New York Times bestsellers, over 10 million books in print, and published in over 25 languages. Please welcome Jane Green. Cheers. Cheers. Once you've got something published, whether it's hybrid or self or traditional publishing, who gets what in the deal? So what's the mechanics of the business of it? In a, first of all, in a traditional sense, how does that work or is it all better off now and it works however you negotiate it? Yeah, I, I think um, traditionally what, what I had always tried to do and what many of us try to do is get as big an advance as possible. Um, although the problem with that now is that publishers used to pay for a name. If you were a big name, even if your last book didn't sell so well, they were so excited to have you and they, they would take a bet. Um, nobody does that anymore in this country. In this country, you are only as good as your last book sales. And so if they see that you haven't earned out or there's a huge gap between what you were paid and, and, and what you have earned, you're going to have a really hard time getting a new deal. Other people who I think have been really clever, like Ellen Hildebrand, takes, I, I think it's all on the back end. So the publishers are not paying her, because what you have to understand, let's say the publisher's paying you 100,000 for your book. You're only gonna start getting royalties when they've recouped back their 100,000 that they've spent. So once they've made that, then you start getting royalties. So it's really common for authors, particularly authors who, who take it on the front end, who take high advances, to never earn up. They never see a penny. They never get royalties after that. And in fact, you know, technically they owe the publisher. Um, although obviously you're, ne you're never asked to pay that, but it makes it very hard to get a new book deal. I've, I've never heard of, a, of an author having to write a book to, but you know, what happens is everything's, of, all your numbers are available on, on a, a certain pl business platform that all the publishers are on. And all they have to do is tap, 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 and they can see exactly how many books you sold. And, mm -hmm. and let's say you sign that deal for a hundred grand, but you only actually ended up selling 10,000 thousand dollars worth of books well no one's going to give you more than ten thousand dollars next time so right. um so actually i think it's quite smart to to do i wish i'd done what ellen had done um taking money off the the back end because then that you owe them nothing and and uh, are you in a higher percentage right away of royalties on those sales than you get in the advance i assume you are I don't know actually because I've only ever front all of my deals have always been front loaded. But when you um, get your royalties, the royalties that you end up getting, would you, if you'd had those royalties from day one, have made possibly a hundred thousand? Possibly. They they might well be higher. And, and that, by the way, is also the really interesting thing about self-publishing, in yeah. that particularly the online books are I I, I think <clears throat> I might be wrong, but I think we might get something like 25 to 40% of, of the books that are sold online. You have to remember, it costs the publishers nothing to go online. Mm. They're not paying for paper or printing or distribution or anything. It's just, it's online, it's there. And so we as the author get whatever percentage we get. If you self-publish, you get 70% of every book sold. Right. And that's a very, very big difference. So I mean, I, I- a known commodity that you can trust yourself that you will sell books. Are you in the next one going to do it that way? Me? Me, mm. myself, I? Mm. Um, I have to be honest, I've really, and I've spoken to a bunch of people who have done it that's really- Did I the bitch or you thought, the publisher might be listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, I'm, I'm really tempted and I actually do have a novel that is finished that I haven't yet sold and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. And it may be that I go down that road with the novel. I know for my nonfiction, I definitely want it to be traditional publishing, right. 100%. Um, but with this novel that, that I actually have sold the TV, but I haven't sold the book yet, uh, it, may be, it may be something that I consider. I think my worry is just the amount of work. I couldn't do it all by myself. And so then you, 
you're also looking at the expenditure of taking on people who who can help make it but I also recognize that I have an existing brand name and so I have an automatic audience um and and actually you know if I if I run the numbers now if I were to sell I sold with the last book I, right now I would make about the same amount of money so it therefore, would be, I would just it say would break it's me. not worth it if you if it's the same whichever way you may as well enjoy the benefits of the well although you could argue that that would be I mean I I suspect I could do you know, this is where I feel very lucky to live in Westport we are surrounded by some of the most talented brilliant people in the world I mean I've got friends who are huge creative directors with huge agencies and talented beyond and i know i could phone them up and say hey mates rates can we can you do something for i like that mates but, rates. You know, but i i i'm pretty certain that with the help of these brilliant people in this town that i could actually put together campaigns that knock the socks off anything that any of the traditional publishers are doing and that's where you start to think well you look at the generic campaign that the publisher shows you and it's like Jane Green's new book you know but and, the, and then you think well I know that X could do something that actually would make people sit up and so you wonder is it is it worth it could I, you I do a, a, a hybrid I'm of not, by I'm putting not a team of yet, maybe soon could you put that mate rate thing together and go to the publisher that you traditionally work with and say look I have this package it's therefore worth more as an advance because I can throw this and mobilize this into it. Um, in theory, that's of course the most brilliant way of doing it. And that would, that would make the most sense. But I have found publishers to be notoriously um, uncreative. They do what they do. And they, they, most of the publishers that I've come across are not willing to step outside the box. Mm. Even when you have brilliant people there, even when it's very obvious, they just. Even if you brought them the campaign, they'd still say, we've never done it, we wouldn't wish to. With You mentioned a moment ago TV and rights. So when you have your product up and out and ready to go, how do those other rights work? Is the publisher looking for all rights or only in book publishing? Well, uh, only it would only be book publishing generally, but you you could do a world rights deal where you, which is going to probably be a bigger deal where you would sell one publisher the rights all over the world. I have never done that, and it's not something I would be inclined to do because I know my sales are very good in the UK and in Canada and Sweden and Germany, and so I'm likely to make more money by having a really good foreign rights team who can sell those rights individually. TV and film are always done separately, but most agents, most literary agents, will either have somebody working in film and TV, or they will have very good relationships with a film TV agent who, can, who, who will represent your book. So again, representing and using the hybrid model or a self-publishing model or a traditional model, if it's the hybrid model, or the traditional model, if you've got that repping going on, from repping, it's only repping in the book publishing world. So it's people representing you to libraries and bookstores and so on. So for TV, when you say a literary agent, at what point would you get a literary agent? What's the relationship between literary agent and publisher? Is that your go-between? Is that your person you engage That's, to yeah. deal with the, with the publisher? That's exactly right. I mean, I, I think that, uh, I would never want to navigate the world of publishing without an agent. And I have to say, even self-publishing, if you really wanted to do it successfully, I think there are, there are plenty of agents now who are big agents who, who are representing authors who are self-published or, or hybrid published, and they can help you navigate that world in a way that, that you never could, although you're also going to pay them 15% so but i think it's worth it i think but anybody who thinks that they can that, yeah you've said right there the 15 percent. i remember that being an ad agency fee that i used to pay for for ad agencies you know in my business world if it's 15 percent, that, that's like the standard rate i think that's something that that anyone aspiring to self-publish or hybrid publish 
they wouldn't necessarily know that. And that's golden information to know, well, no, you do pay a literary agent. That's what it is. You don't pay them up front. You pay them a percentage of sales or do they get an upfront fee? And is they, a literary agent going to be willing to take someone on as an unknown or is it just a hopeless cause trying to find a literary agent before you're a known author? No, I, I think um, if they read a book that they love, it could be by by somebody they've never heard of before, somebody who's never written for, and if they love it, they're going to get behind it. And, and if it's a, a literary agent who's known, they're gonna ring up the editors that they know and say, look, I, this book has landed on my desk that I think is really special. And if they have a good enough reputation, the editors are gonna listen to them because everybody still wants to find the next Harry Potter. Yeah. Um, and so, yes, agents, absolutely will take a chance if you can get your book in front of them because that's the, the hard bit is they all have a slush pile a lot of them have interns reading through it so you just you don't ever know whether your book is is getting to the agent in the first place so i i would imagine if i was ready to publish i would try sending to i'd find out the name of the person i'd send it to random house i suspect that's a waste of time what there is to yeah do. yeah you you never want to send it straight to an editor because that way yeah. it's really never going to get seen but it, most agents you know have young kids who are very smart who are working for them who are readers and mm. they will read on their behalf now that is not to say that your book will necessarily appeal to them which is why it's it, it's you know such a, a, a um an unpredictable um thing to, to send your book out but you just have to keep going it really is the only way or someone you know if look i have a policy of i won't read manuscripts before they have a publishing deal because otherwise i i'd have them sent to me every you know i i already get so many books that i'm sent but i have to say i did you know i i one of my well she is actually my best friend when we met i knew she'd written a novel I knew she'd never asked me to read it. And then one day she said she was sending it out to agents. And I found myself saying, you know, if you want me to have a look at it, I'll, I'll have, and, and I immediately regretted it thinking, I can't believe I just broke my policy. I never do this, but I love this girl. And I took this book with me on a plane somewhere and it was magnificent. And- Thank goodness. It, well, but within within a week, I got her signed to one of the biggest agencies in the world. Um, and and so, you know, if you know someone, not me, don't <laughs> send it to me. But if you no know, submissions you know, to Jane Green, yeah, no Ooh. submissions to me. That was my only exception. Um, but you know, if you know someone, it, it's so much of this yeah. is about who you know, and and not that anyone's going to get you published. But if you have written something good, and you can get somebody in the industry to read it they can then perhaps put a word in for you with someone, which really does make all the difference. I think that's golden, golden advice. And I think the literary agent to me, that's, that's very interesting. Yeah. Is it like they are available and accessible by way of a sort of database or? How well, there, yeah, there is a book. There is a book that you will find at the Westport Public Library. Hey. I believe it's called Writer's Market yeah. and it lists all of the agents. But I would say the other thing is, think about the books that your book, you might say, well, if I were to describe it, who, whose books would I, would I think I of? It too. Yeah. yeah, and then if you look in the acknowledgements, almost everybody acknowledges their agents and start to make a list. Wow, oh, that's a great tip. Yeah, That great is tip. a great tip. There's a new version of the tea time with the Brits. It could be tequila, it could be a cup of tea, or it could be a tip. I think that's an excellent writer's tip from mm. Jane Green at Tea Time with the Brits. I think we have a wonderful few segments there. Right. Book authors out there budding or existing, I I think I think you can make it. I think they can too. And I would say good luck to all of you. Don't send me your books, but I look forward to reading them when they're on the shelves. Jane Green! Cheers again! Cheers! Cheers!